Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to continue the topic of the heat exchangers in Aspen Plus and, in, um, and we're going to see how we can do the rigorous calculations. Uh, in the previous videos, we saw how we can do the shortcut calculations and we saw that we just give um, some small amount of uh, inputs and we get small amount of outputs which were the, the heat transfer coefficient, the area of heat transfer and the um, the duty and, and stuff like that and in, in this case we didn't get any details about the the area how many tubes and the area of, of one, one tube and, and, and all these uh, kind of things so uh, to know all these details we need to shift to the uh, rigorous mode and the rigorous mode is going to be more detailed calculations and it's going to give us more outputs and more details about the design of the heat exchanger itself to shift from the shortcut to the um, rigorous mode we can do it by one of two things either to double click on the uh, heat exchanger and in the model fidelity that we chose uh, shortcut uh, in this part last last time we can go to the type of the heat exchanger we're interested in either to go to shell and tube cattery boiler thermosiphon air cooler or the uh, the plate and frame in our case, we, we want to go to or for the shell and tube heat exchanger. Once we click on this uh, option, it, it opens this window which says convert to rigorous exchanger. And this is exactly what we want to do. And it, it asks you again which one of these uh, you are interested in. And what is the method of calculations that you want to do? Um, and, and as you remember, we mentioned before that there are two uh, modes, either to go for the design or for the rating mode. This is the sizing, which is the design mode, uh, where you, you supply the information about the, uh, the flow rates and the temperatures you, are, you want to, to achieve. And it gives you the design of the heat exchanger that will satisfy your needs. Or to go for the specifying the geometry, which means that you are defining the number of tubes, the area of heat transfer, and the, the, the diameter of the shell, the diameter of the tubes, and all these this kind of things. And the, the software will use this data to calculate the, the output of the heat exchanger. In our case, we are interested in the design, and that's why we're going to pick the, the size exchanger. And uh, you have one of two options uh, when you pick the size exchanger, either to go for size interactively or size interactively using template. The, the, other, the second option is, uh, can be used when you have um, some some settings or some um, uh, some um, kind of uh, specifications that you you already used before and you saved as a template and these specifications can be imported by by clicking on this option and then browse and by importing this you you don't need to define all these uh, specs again because they are already specified in this file. Um, we, we will see what these specs are, but this is what, what this option is about. Um, and once you're ready, you can click on convert. But before we click convert, there is another way that you can shift to the shortcut mode which, or, or, or the rigorous mode, which is the EDR exchanger feasibility. This is the first time to go for this, this bar, by the way. And if you click on this uh, this button, you can uh, see that this this uh, this uh, new window that that uh, opens, and it, it should give you um, a list of all the heat exchangers that you have in your flow sheet. In, in our case, we have only one heat exchanger, that's why we have only this um, this li this uh, line in the or this this row in the in the table. Um, but you can you can see all the heat exchangers that you have. Uh, and you can see that this is, um, it, has, it says to activate optional uh, operational risks, convert one or more of the, your simple models into rigorous EDR models, and it says enabled by Aspen EDR design and rating. To, to understand what, what is this, and, and you can see this icon, and it seems like there's something in there. Um, if you open all the, um, the Aspen Plus, uh, uh, or, or when, after installing Aspen Plus, you can see that there are other um, software that are installed with Aspen Plus and one of them is the Aspen Exchanger Design and Rating um, and this is one kind of standalone uh, Aspen Plus um, software that is dedicated to heat exchangers um, design and rating and and you can see that you, you can use it only for heat exchanger design no matter what flow sheet you have you can just supply the information about the, the two fluids and the specs of temperature and, and all these things, and, and then it's gonna do the design. 
Um, in our case, we can do this uh, inside the simulation and by converting to rigorous, and that's why it says it's enabled by Aspen EDR, which means that it recalls the Aspen EDR software and it 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 makes this, this software do the calculations and then it gets the outputs from the Aspen EDR and imports them back into Aspen Plus, uh, which, which is very, very nice actually. So when we press on convert to rigorous, it opens the same window that was open before. So it's, it's gonna do the same, this, exactly the same thing. So once the, the, this option is, um, uh, is chosen, then we, you can see that this window opens and it actually asks you what you want to do. Uh, and this is exactly what you would see in case of using Aspen EDR, the standalone software. Um, what you want to do is to make sure that these two parts are fully specified. Uh, the about the process and the geometry and this is the warnings and run status which are the results of the of the um, of the run and it tells you if it's a success, successful runs or you have errors or whatever the the nice thing about what we did which is doing the simulation or using EDR inside Aspen plus is that it imports all the data from the simulation into the Aspen EDR. So uh, if you'd see here that we have the flow rate in kilogram per hour for uh, which, which are these two numbers are exactly the numbers that we, uh, we used before in the previous video. This number, we obtained this number from the flow sheeting options. If you, if you remember, we, 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 uh, oh, we cannot open it now. Well, we go to the flow sheeting options and then we, we chose to set a value uh, of, the, of the temperature of the output temperature by ch changing the flow rate. And this is exactly what we got. So I didn't put the numbers manually. It, it was important based on the values that we uh, entered before or, or that we have in the simulation. The pressures, again, the same thing. And we have everything here. Uh, there are some kind of default values for the pressure drop. Uh, I usually, or I, that's what I know, that we use uh, 5 PSI for both sides, which is the allowable. And here, um, um, this is 0, but we can uh, point, uh, put point 0.005, which is the number that I think uh, we had in the problem statement. Anyways, I'm just putting in a number and then we'll see how, how life will go. So this, this, this is uh, like very time saving because you can, you can imagine how much time you would waste by taking, taking these numbers from here and importing them from uh, to, to here. The second part is related to the geometry of the heat exchanger, which is the uh, number of tubes, the, uh, the shell side, the shell uh, diameter, and the tube diameter, the tube pitch, the, uh, the uh, arrangements of the tube, and, and, and many other things. And here, you would see that this is, there are a lot of details here that are, uh, or need somebody who is uh, knowledgeable about the heat exchangers and know all the details and what to pick. Um, and and a lot of these options I'm not I'm not very very familiar with so I usually go for the the um, default which is like this so so here we we have the heat exchanger uh, it consists mainly of two caps and the shell so this is what you you can choose the shape of the cap from the left side and the left the right side cap and um, here you'd see that this is the shell uh, the type of the shell. Um, I'm not going to go into these details because I'm not very familiar with them and uh, whoever is interested you can simply go uh, and read more about them and see what you can learn about them and see which is more um, suitable for your application. Um, we located the, the hot flow in the shell side and it took the outside diameter of the tube to be 0.75 inches uh, and the tube pattern to be 30 degrees triangular. You can have triangular or square pitches and you can um, make the uh, triangular uh, pitch or square pitch rotated um, uh, with respect to the, or relative to the flow direction. Um, you can have baffles and the baffle can be single segmented, double or triple segmented. You can have the uh, baffle cut orientation to be horizontal or vertical. Uh, this is the material of construction, can be carbon steel, can be copper, uh, whatever the, the material that you want, can you can find it here. And of course, this will have an impact on the pressure drop because of the surface roughness and on the thermal conductivity or the or the heat transfer because of the thermal conductivity and other, other stuff related to the mechanical properties of this uh, solid material or this uh, material that you are used, using to um, uh, manufacture the heat exchanger from. Um, 
So this is the uh, the main part that has to be fulfilled. And it's usually there are some options or, or some values that are uh, chosen here as the default values. And you can specify some other values as kind of restrictions if you have any restrictions related to the space or related to um, any, any other thing that you have. For instance, if you have uh, the space that you have available for the heat exchanger uh, will only accept eight feet uh, tubes. So if you have uh, the, the design gave you like 12 or, or, or 15 uh, or 16 feet tubes, then this is not going to be uh, suitable. So if, if you have any restrictions, you can put it here related to the shell inside the diameter, tube length, the baffle spacing, the number of baffles, number of tube passes, shells in series or shells in parallel, whatever. Anyway, so now we have everything now uh, set, so we can go for sizing. And by sizing, the, the software is going to um, do the uh, calculations or on many designs, and it's going to pick the most suitable design for your application. So what I'm going to do now, just just look at the numbers here. It it, I think what I saw, it was like 50-something 50, 50 design, just, just to... to understand or to, to have an imagination of how fast this this went uh, the single design would usually take from an experienced person uh, from two to three hours uh, this is to the best of my knowledge of course um, and uh, and these calculations are, 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 are long calculations as we mentioned in the one previous video before so uh, this, this software did f more than 50 designs which would take by manual calculations more than 100 hours of calculation. And this was done in a few seconds. So this, this is pretty amazing. I just want the, the audiences to be aware of how great this is. Uh, it's doing very complex, or, or not, not very complex, but very long calculations in no time. Um, so uh, this is kind of a summary of what, the, what we have. This, this is the same values as this, so we, we don't have anything new. But here it says the shell inside diameter is eight, uh, eight feet, uh, eight inches, and the uh, outside diameter eight point six hundred twenty-five. This is the tube length, which is one hundred and twelve feet, which is uh, inches. I'm sorry, and this is the buffalo spacing. So we have all all the values here, and here you can see the temperature profile along the length of the heat exchanger. It starts from zero, and and this is the shell side, and it says SS bulk temperature, which is the shell side and it's decreasing and for the tube side we can see that um, we have two passes uh, in the tube side and that's why it starts from here goes up and then goes back so it's, it's changing direction um, and it's going back and forth design looks nice and if you if you look at the errors it's going to give you the kind of this is the every design error that you should face the 1062 error it gives you the, the error telling you that there is a possibility of 50 percent that the uh, the uh, routing of the fluids in the shell and tube that might not be right so this i i i usually do not care about this error um it gives a lot of errors that might not be uh, like uh, kind of real errors it's just some warnings that you have to keep an eye on um uh, anyway, so uh, you can read the errors in, in case you're interested. I don't want to waste time on them. But the 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 main thing that you don't have any uh, any kind of big errors. It's just warnings in case if you have very or, or a serious error, the design cannot be accepted. So let's say I have the same thing that I mentioned before that I have a restriction on this space. So I can add one. Um, restriction here that the tube length in feet to be 8 so now it's 9.3 I want it to be 8 and and by the way the, there are some standards for the diameters for the length and for for all these things now, there are tables and um, you can find them in, in, in textbooks like the process heat transfer by Kern and, and, and other any, any heat transfer software uh, I mean uh, textbook that you can find that the the, the uh, standards for the length of the tubes and on and, and the, the number of tubes and all these things so in, in this case uh, you can never or in the, in the textbooks you can never find a standard tube length of 9.3 um, uh, feet so it's it's either 8 or 12 or 16 so I, I'm gonna go for 8 uh, just for the standard and uh, and of course I can I can do the same here for the the uh, the uh, tube outside diameter and the inside diameter but I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this so 
I can now do the sizing again. It's now doing all the calculations again based on this uh, new uh, parameter here. And this is the previous design and this is the new design. And you can see now it changed the, uh, the, 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 the tube length to be eight. And the diameter was in, uh, or, or is more now because we are using a uh, smaller diameter. So we have to compensate the, the, the uh, I mean, uh, uh, smaller length. So we have to compensate the change in length by increasing in the diameter. So this is the new diameter. This is the number of passes. And this is everything that we have here. So um, this is the new design. And I, uh, if, I, if I open the errors, I find that there are no serious errors. It's just some warnings, so I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. So now I can accept this design. By pressing accept design, now the software has imported, the Aspen Plus has imported all the specs of the, or, or all the design uh, details of the heat exchanger from Aspen EDR to, um, uh, to uh, Aspen Plus. And here in the EDR browser, you can see the the inputs are um, they include everything here and these are the numbers that were outputs of the previous uh, or, or on the EDR uh, um, uh, run that we just did so uh, it, it's pretty handy and it's pretty flexible you can you don't need to import any values by yourself just by shifting from here to there it does everything but now you can you can see that the the software is uh, tells you that the input changed and it, it didn't do the run. Uh, it hasn't done the run yet. Uh, and, and, and this is because this, this is kind of, for the software, this is a new input that has not been used to run the file or, or to run the simulation. So you have to run the simulation one more time. Um, and in this case, it's doing the detailed calculations, not just the shortcut calculations. And by doing all these calculations, it should, it should generate the same results, of course, and that's uh, for, for, for the streams. So for the stream results, you can see that the temperatures are 3670, 250, 315 point something, 302. So it's, it's kind of close to what we, uh, we wanted in the very beginning. Um, the last thing we wanna, I want to talk about in this video is the outputs that you can get. And this is, this is pretty amazing, actually, which is um, uh, what you can get uh, as outputs out of uh, the rigorous calculations uh, comparing to what you can get from the shortcut calculations. Uh, just before we go to that, I just want to see here that this is what we see. Uh, before we do the, the, uh, the rigorous calculations, all these were empty. Now it tells us that they are all uh, done. I have no problem with the pressure. I have no problem with the temperature, with the vibration, with the erosion, with heat transfer. So it's, it's kind of uh, OK for all of them. Uh, now let's see. go to the EDR browser and see the results that we have. And in the results, it can give you. <coughs> um, of course, I, you, you can you can feel free to uh, to browse all these. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into all these details. So um, it gives you the summary of the inputs, which is already what we we know. Um, and it 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 kind of puts them in forms uh, based on what you're interested in. So this is the definition of the problem. These are the temperatures and the, the, uh, the pressures and, and the, uh, the allowable pressure drop and the fouling resistance. And you can see um, just the details about the hot side. You can see the details about the cold side. You can see details about the geometry. Um, of the tubes, of the exchanger type, of the baffles, and you can see um, more details here about the bundle of the tubes, the nozzles, you can see details. It, it's kind of very, very detailed, uh, uh, detailed calculations or detailed results of the, uh, of the heat exchanger. Um, you can see the warnings, you can see the, uh, the time sheet. The time sheet is very important actually because it gives you, it, it's kind of the sheet that you give to the, uh, the vendor or the manufacturer who is going to make the heat exchanger for you. So it's kind of standard sheet and you can see that it includes all the details um, uh, starting from the performance of the unit, which is the fluid allocations, what is in the shell side and which in the tube side, the flow rates, the temperatures, and the, fl the physical properties of the, uh, of the two fluids, um, kind of sketch of the heat exchanger, the construction of the, cell, of the shell, which is the, um, it's under vacuum or under pressure, 
what's the pressure inside, the design temperature, number of passes, uh, the corrosion allowance, the connections, and you can see here the shell diameter and all the details that you are interested in can be found here. The Tema sheet is very informative uh, kind of table that you can use. Um, here you can see overall summary. It includes all the details, but in a different form. The, the part that is... Uh, uh, kind of nice which are these two parts actually so not, not just one part which is the mechanical summary um, the mechanical summary it gives you uh, some information but from the mechanical point of view so it can give you the machine or, or the mechanical drawing of the heat exchanger which is always uh, also um, uh, kind of required to give or to provide for the vendor or the manufacturer to make the exchanger for you so it gives you all the details about the the uh, the the, uh, the side view, the the um, the front view, and the bolts and nuts. You can see how many bolts they're using to fix all the the saddle supports. And for the tube sheet layout, you can see how the tubes are arranged in the sheet, and you can find here uh, more information about the tube pitch, the tube passes, the uh, the baffle type, the baffle cut, and on all these information are already available here. Um, with the with the tube arrangement and all these things, um, it also gives you information about the cost of the of the heat exchanger. This might not be very accurate, of course, because the the, the software is is an kind of an old version that that, that I'm using, and um, the the costing might not be very accurate in this case. Um, the last thing is the calculation details, which can give you information about the shell side and the tube side. Uh, Point by point, so you can you can see here this is the point uh, from one to twenty. It's breaking the heat exchanger into parts, and in each part you can it gives you the distance from the end, starting from ninety four. Uh, we said it's feet, so you can put it as um, feet, and starting from zero to eight. Um, and for each part, you can see the bulk temperature, the fouling surface uh, temperature, the uh, the everything. You can find everything. The physical properties are available, and you can uh, have plots here for the um, the bulk temperature. You can see the pressure drop uh, for the shell side. You can you can you can find everything. Uh, for the tube side, is is going to be more interesting because we have we have four passes, so you can. Um, you can see the, the tube side temperature, uh, oops, the, the stream temperature, it's going back and forth. You can see the uh, pressure change. Uh, and this, this is nice because you can see that the, the temperature or the pressure starts here at, at the, the maximum value and then it, it or, or this is the pressure change, I'm sorry. It's starting here from, from the, the smallest pressure uh, change. I'm, no, I think, I think it's here, I'm sorry. Um, and now it's, it's going lower. And here you can see there is a small gap between the first pass and the second pass because there is a change in direction which results in some pressure drop. And then the pressure decreases and the same gap here and the pressure decreases same gap here and this is the outlet pressure so this this is pretty nice you can see you can you can plot any um, any one of these uh, values and you can see them as numbers um, at any point of the heat exchanger either in the shell side or in the tube side um, so this is uh, this is all what I want to say in this video about the rigorous uh, shell and tube heat exchanger calculations hope it helps and I'll see you in the next video inshallah goodbye